Hey there, Mary Gilkerson here. There are three keys to consistently making art that you love that feed your soul, that as well as having an impact on the world. The first is to develop a really solid painting practice. I talked about that a good bit last week. The second is what I'm gonna talk about today, and that is to build an engaged audience. Otherwise, you're just talking to yourself. So in order to have that sustained, sustainable creative practice, you need to build a solid painting practice, you need to develop an engaged audience, and you need to nurture a sustainable creative mindset. So in, today, I'm gonna to be focusing entirely on that engaged audience component of that. There are three myths about being successful as an artist that I want to debunk because they lead directly to a lot of people not being able to do that second thing, not being able to uh, build that engaged audience. So the first is that there's no money in art. That if you go into art, you're going to starve and Probably every one of you who has aspired to become an artist or is an artist or knows an artist has heard that at one time or another. I know I did growing up. In fact, even though growing, I grew up in a family that is full of artists, I still had that thrown at me. My beloved father told me that he really wanted me to major in computer science because that was a more sure thing. And that if I went into that, I would be secure. I'd have a job that I could count on. I didn't listen to him. I'm stubborn that way. I went on and went into art. And about three or four years into um, being able to support myself as an artist, my dad came to me and said, I really owe you an apology. I was wrong and you were right because you have been able to do it. It is a possibility, and I was just worried as a parent. Now, as a college professor for more than 20 years, I ran into that same concern from parents all the time. The reality is that you absolutely can make a living as an artist, that artists have historically made very good livings and decent livings, and you can become a really well-to-do artist if that's your goal. It's not everybody's goal. And there are all sorts of different ways that you can define what it means to be successful as an artist. Doesn't have to be just money. But banish the idea that if you go into art, it means that you're gonna have to starve and you're gonna be living in a garret and drinking wine at night and living off of saltines all day long. That's just not the reality. That's a myth that was developed in the 19th century and it needs to be completely put to rest now. Instead, think of yourself as having a whole multitude of ways to become a thriving artist. There are lots of avenues to do that. Number one, you have to figure out how you're going to define what success is for you. And then think about the different ways and directions and paths that you can take in order to get there. The second myth that I hear a lot of, and again, I have ever since I first started teaching, is that in order to make it as an artist, you have to be in New York or LA. I certainly bought into that myth, and like so many young artists, when I finished grad school, I headed to New York, and along with thousands and thousands of my peers. I realized I might have been a little deluded about that as I was walking up and down Fifth Avenue hunting for a job. Maybe it's Park Avenue, don't really remember. And I was carrying my portfolio along with about every fifth person on the street. So at that point, going to a big city, and even now, is not necessarily the answer because you're one among so many when you do that. What we didn't have back when I made that transition that we have now is the opening up of a global market through the internet. So New York, LA, London, Paris don't have a stranglehold on the art market anymore. 
You can determine how you're going to sell your art. You actually don't even have to have a gallery. If you can find a really good gallery to work with, highly recommend it. I've got a great one or two. But you don't have to have that gallery relationship in order to succeed, and you certainly don't have to be in New York, nor do you have to be in L.A. You don't have to even be in a major city. You can live in the middle of the back beyond at this point and still have a very successful, lucrative career. Third thing that I want to talk about is the myth that in order to succeed as an artist, you have to wait around to be discovered. I think this one is responsible for so many, way too many artists kind of putting their, their website up and then sitting back and waiting for the, the deposit slip to be filled out because they've got a website. How come the cha-ching isn't happening? And it all goes back to that idea that if you're good enough, if you have talent, that talent's going to just be sort of intrinsically recognized. Newsflash, that's not what happens, and it's not what has ever been the real case of what happens with artists. In order to succeed in art, as in any other field, you have to get out there. You have to engage. You have to network. You have to become known. So you can't just sit in your studio nourishing yourself with the idea that if you're good enough, somehow the world is going to find you. You have to leave the breadcrumbs out there so that the world knows where to look for you, which means you have to go to openings, you have to enter competitions, you have to regularly update your website, you have to write blog posts, you have to be active on social media. Doesn't matter which avenue you're going to go down to build that engaged audience, all of them require those things. It means you have to participate in the artistic community in order to find an audience. You can't wait, you can't be passive, and you can't just think that talent is going to bring them to your door. So that means you have to actually begin to build relationships. So the key to building an engaged audience is to build relationships with potential customers and clients. And those customers, customers and clients might be individual collectors, if that's the avenue you want to go down. They might be municipalities who have public art programs, if that's the avenue you want to go down. It might be museums and nonprofit spaces, if that's the direction you want to go. All of them are perfectly valid, and you can even do a combination of all three. But you have to get out and create the relationships that will begin to build that engaged audience. So, as you think about this, think about the impact that you can have on the world. Your art is waiting to connect with the audience that's already out there. The world is huge, so it's not, don't get caught up in the scarcity mentality and think that there is not going to be an audience for you because you see Susie, Sally, and Bobby over there getting one person shows. There is a big enough world and there are enough audiences out there for all of us because we're all different, so we're going to speak to different audiences. Don't wait around. Think about the impact that your work could have on the world. Who are you, who am I, who are we, to hold our work back from an audience that's waiting to see it? So think about how you can build that engaged audience. And if you would like to dive in a little bit more deeply into that, just for the 12 days of Christmas, I put the three main webinars that I've used over the last year back up online. Lots of people were asking about it for this week, especially when we're in between the holidays. So if you want to watch Stop Starving, Start Thriving, which is my webinar about building an engaged audience, click the link that's in the description above and head on over and take a look. Enjoy, Merry Christmas, 
and Happy New Year. Get out there and start building that audience now. Bye-bye for now.